Christina had counted the days separating her from her solo hiking trip in the equatorial jungles of Africa, but when she sprained her ankle and was left helpless in the wild, she was understandably terrified. And when an angry gorilla captured her, she was afraid her life was over. The first part of Christina's hike in Virunga, Rwanda went smoothly. The moment she entered the rainforest, it was like being on another planet. But her awe at her surroundings was suddenly interrupted by an unexpected equatorial downpour, and within moments, Christina was soaked to the skin. She stepped backward to find shelter under a giant tree, but the heel of her boot slipped. Her momentum carried her backward, and she twisted her ankle badly as she attempted to regain her balance. Pain shot up her leg and seemed to settle in her hip. At the same time, a shrill shriek echoed through the trees, sending currents of electricity up her spine. Whatever that was, it didn't sound friendly. Christina tugged the collar of her hiking jacket tightly around her neck and assessed her situation. It didn't look good at all. Her ankle was throbbing with pain, and she doubted she would be able to walk even a few steps. She was stranded, and she was helpless. Her only hope was a possible search party, and she didn't hold out much faith that they would find her. She was wet, in pain, and didn't know how long she would be able to survive in the jungle in her current state. Suddenly, there was a rustle in the trees to her right. She tried to turn her body to see better, but the pain from her injured ankle made moving difficult. Then, her worst nightmare came true. Giant silhouettes emerged from the curtains of rain at the edge of a clearing. She recognized the shapes immediately. They were African mountain gorillas, a whole family of them. In her panic, she did a quick count. There was one giant silverback, the patriarch she assumed, and five smaller females of different sizes. And then there was a whole nursery of little ones. Christina stopped counting at seven. She squeezed herself tightly against the tree in an attempt to remain invisible. However, the movement attracted the male gorilla's attention. He raised himself to his hind legs and started thumping his enormous chest, furiously grunting at her. It was clear he wasn't happy with her presence. Christina's mind raced to remember everything she knew about these mountain gorillas. Were they easily provoked? Were they carnivores or herbivores? How much danger was she in? She knew that mountain gorillas thrive in the dense rainforests of Virunga and Bwindi impenetrable national parks in Africa. She also knew they were highly endangered, and she remembered that they typically maintain a peaceful and non-aggressive demeanor within their groups. To communicate, they rely on complex body language, vocalizations, and grooming rituals, and all of these help to foster social bonds. For a split second, Christina wanted to feel relieved. After all, everything she remembered about these animals classified them as gentle giants. But it was difficult to believe that while faced with a giant silverback thumping his chest and making increasingly aggressive grunts. Her heart pounded in her ribcage almost as loudly as the silverback's chest thumps. He had started to curl his upper lip to bare his teeth. That couldn't be good. Then, without warning, the silverback charged. It was thunderous, as if the earth shook around her. Christina's life flashed before her eyes. This was not how she had intended to die. Her eyes were locked to his in fear, but then she remembered a crucial piece of information. Christina immediately shifted into a submissive posture. She dropped her eyes down to the ground and hunched her shoulders slightly to appear unthreatening. This calmed the gorilla down for a moment, and he stopped dead in his tracks. Christina tried to reassure herself by thinking of the silverback as a gentle giant. But it didn't help much, especially because the silverback charged again without warning. Christina looked up briefly and saw a look of madness on his face. His teeth were fully bared, and he swung his arms wildly as he rushed towards her in full gallop. This is it, she thought. This is where I find out if there is life after death. Christina closed her eyes, waiting for the inevitable and hoping above hope that her death would be quick and painless. She felt herself being lifted as if she was a rag doll. When she dared open her eyes, she found the silverback had snatched her up, tucked her under one arm, and was setting off into the dense jungle at an uncomfortable gait. The family of females and young ones followed obediently, always remaining at least ten steps behind the silverback. Christina's dread turned into mild hysteria. She started giggling. At least her death wouldn't be conventional. Here she was, being carried under the arm of a giant silverback gorilla on her way to who knows where, possibly to be killed. The silverback hopped over a gnarled bowl and then pulled himself up into the fork of a tree. 
Christina dared to open her eyes again when she felt she was being moved. She was still under the gorilla's left arm, but he was now gently putting her down on a bed of leaves. Her mind continued to drip-feed her with information she had read somewhere in the past. This was a gorilla nest. They built these a little way off the ground, often in the forks of a giant rainforest tree, mostly to keep off the perpetually wet ground. Once he had dropped her in the bed of leaves, the silverback lumbered down to the jungle floor again. She wasn't sure what to make of this behavior. The gorilla seemed to only have a passing interest in her now. He sat on his haunches on the rainforest floor, poking at a pile of leaves with a twig, and only occasionally glanced up at her from the corner of his eye. Without moving too much, she started to scan her surroundings. The nest was a combination of intricately woven saplings covered with a thick layer of fresh leaves. It was huge, and, Christina thought, it was really comfortable. She started giggling again at the absurdity of it all. Here she was, a high-flying corporate lawyer from New York, stuck in a gorilla nest in the equatorial African rainforest, with a giant silverback standing guard. Christina noticed the sounds around her changing. The ever-present squeaking of the tree frogs and the high-pitched zing of the cicadas made way for crickets and other sounds she didn't recognize. In the ever-murky twilight of the jungle, she realized that night was rolling in. It would be dark soon, and there was no way to escape. Christina wondered briefly if she would meet her end during the night, or if the silverback would wait for morning before finishing her off. And then, out of pure exhaustion, she fell asleep. She woke up to the sounds of human voices, but she made it off as a conjuring from her tired imagination. Around her, it was light, morning, she thought, so the silverback had obviously decided to spare her until daylight. Then she heard the voices again. The silverback, resting on his back a few meters away, had heard it too. He rose to his hind legs and checked on his family. Then he pulled himself into the nest with one arm. He sat right in front of Christina and leaned forward, his face inches from hers. He stared into her eyes for a minute. She couldn't break the mesmerizing hold of that primeval stare. Then, the silverback swung to the ground, gathered his family, and disappeared soundlessly into the jungle behind her. She heard the human voices again and suddenly realized they were calling her name. Gathering all her strength, Christina called back. Within minutes, the search party had found her. On the way down the mountain, securely strapped to a stretcher, Christina relayed her story to one of the wildlife guides. She was never in any real danger, he told her. The silverback had probably noticed her injury and tried to keep her safe until help arrived. Gorillas have a kind and gentle nature, he said, even if they seem ferocious. She was better off with his family than she would have been on her own with an injured ankle. Christina was speechless. She had already been sure she would never forget this trip to Africa, but now she knew for certain that she would forever remember her shocking adventure among a family of gorillas. What a happy ending! Have you ever had an experience with a wild animal? How would you have felt if this happened to you? Share your thoughts with us in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.